Welcome back to my community on Afrocentric Television Channel 15.8. Today, we are bringing in one of our people, our guest, our partner, I would say, in this, because this is a major challenge in Houston, um, especially. You know, I can only speak for Houston as at this moment. One of the things we go through is the challenge of getting our Nigerian passport, e-passport, they call it. Um, you know, he, he wears different a, a lot of hats, I would say. Uh, his name is uh, Pastor Abolaji Ayobami. He's also the Vice President of FATAP Global and FDN. He also is the coordinator of the uh, consular services in the state of Texas. You know, where they, what they do there is they, they process the e-passport production and they facilitate that, the Nigerian visa, the emergency travel certificate. Also, in general, he is an energy consultant and a global business consultant. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I know you do a lot of things, oh, yes, sir. but today, Today, as you can see the, the energy in me, today we are going to be talking about a major challenge facing Houstonians, precisely. You live in Houston. Yes, sir. You're based in Houston with past. your family. Yes, sir. Why are we experiencing a huge challenge in securing a Nigerian passport? Given that Houston has the most diverse culture and the highest concentration of Nigerians in the United States. We should have an embassy here. That's correct. But we do not. Because we do not, your services provide some intervention That's services right. where, uh, on behalf of the consulate, you arrange where people come for their fingerprints, their biometrics. You know, biometrics, mm -hmm. and all of those things. And then you collect all of those information and get it over to, to the consulate. consulate. Yes, sir. However, there's still a lot of challenge to, and this thing happens, it doesn't happen every two weeks. It happens once in a while, a long while, maybe twice a year, um, or three times a year, something like that. That's and right. there are different other services. Tell us, why are we experiencing these challenges? Thank you very much. Uh, actually, the problem that Nigerian faces is caused by, first of all, the inability of Nigerians themselves to keep to the time and the date on their e-passports. What we have seen in the past is that people wait until the last moment to realize that their passports are expired, whereas the opportunity is that six months before the expiration of every passport, you can renew your passport. Oh, I thought it was three months. No, it's six months. Or could that be because you, maybe there's not enough awareness? not enough awareness and the attitude of our people to our home passport is not like the attitude of our people to having the blue american passport until when nigerians want to travel they don't think of we don't feel the need Nigeria. to exactly so and most of the time the, the passport will have expired three six months ahead I mean, before time and they will just think i can just grab it and go to nigeria because since i'm going to nigeria but international law says that any traveling document passport biometric must have six month validity mm -hmm, validity so, that i'm aware of our people we have a nonchalant attitude to keeping our own thing current now whenever they have the opportunity to now travel or when they need it for either immigration services mm -hmm. or something they come up in mass and like you said Houston, especially the city of texas have the largest concentration of nigeria i remember i was speaking to with one of the mayors the past mayor in houston some four years or five years ago that gave me a, a run figure as at that time, that there are about 415,000 resident, legally resident Nigerians in, in the Houston, state of Texas. In Houston alone. Not the state of Texas. 45 or 400,000. 415,000. That's point something million. That's almost half a million people. And that is as at four or five years ago when the former mayor Anis Parker was there. Yeah. But Denise Anis Parker. Exactly. But, but the thing is that. Another suburb, the other areas, there are Nigerians scattered everywhere in Dallas, in San Antonio, yeah, in Austin, in neighboring cities. Yeah. So the problem we, you identified was that the non availability of a consulate in Houston. That's one bad. We understand that there's none, right? But in the absence of that, your service comes to play. That's right. Yet we are experiencing those delays. And one of the delays you mentioned is that. Uh, Africans or Nigerians nonchalant attitude and the delays and exactly. then the, the the last minute you know uh, rush rush, rush. Uh, mm -hmm. okay 
those are there yeah now I have subscribed I, I, I still believe in a process that's right maybe that's one of the things that's still not working or working against um, the timing mm -hmm. um, one of the things I experienced is, oh, I, I've never done it personally, but I, I've recommended a lot of people because I share it whenever that I, I get the information that, you know, I share it with people that I know, hey, you need to go get your passport done, you need to get it renewed and whatnot. But there seems to be a lack of process. Thank you. You know, the lack of process is our disorganization. You know, when Nigerians that live in Texas want to have this uh, driver license or mm -hmm, ID, mm -hmm. we go to the Department of Public Safety. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, people go there and they do everything in order. They go fill their phone, they pick up the line. And, but like I said, our people always think, okay, is it not a Nigerian thing? We can find our way to do it. They are never prepared. Number one, there's a process of apl application which you can be done online. There is a company that is outsourced to, they call them Innovate, Innovate One Services. Mm -hmm. Then if you fill that application, if you are not sure, you can misfill it because the country that you are supposed to be the country where the the um, the, the renewal is supposed to come through. Mm -hmm. But because Nigerian goes there, because it's a Nigerian thing, they will choose Nigerian. That means at the end of the application, the, the cost or the, the fee for the application will be asking for the money in Naira. But oh, I yeah, see. it's okay. supposed to be the United US States dollars. or Canada mm -hmm. or whatever, and you'll be in US dollars. Now, the cost of that production in Nigeria is different from the cost of production in America. You cannot convert the currency, let's like, say, okay, if it is $100 here, mm, it should it's be $36,000. 36, no, that's not, it doesn't work like that because there are other things in between. So, our people have a problem in filling that thing out. Then, secondly, family, like father, mother, and the children. So the Innovate Services Company, when you fill the application, you have to fill it one by one for everybody, even if you have six or seven children. I understand children. that. But during the process of payment, the father, because he's the one that's going to pay, and he has his uh, either debit or credit card, card, or whatever. the name on top of the card is his own personal name. Mm -hmm. He cannot use that card to pay for the whole family, except he register that card under the family name which takes two to three days before Innovate will approve it, that he is the owner of the card. So once they find out that all of them bear the same last name, they cannot allow him or her, or if it's his mother, to use that card to pay for the application. So these are challenges, right? Yes. I, and I know you still have more to come. Mm -hmm. However, why don't you or your service, your company, since you provide that service, put out a video, a two minutes long video, or something like that, because um, you can't teach me, or you can't sell to me what I don't know. That's right. Right? I learn in the process, right? And if I bet, if I find your service absurd, That's like right. something like it's out of the norm, it's just negative, whatever, I may not come back next That's time. That's correct. And I will tell the world that they are just okay. fraud. Yes. They are just this, they mm -hmm. are negative names, That's right. right? However, if you can put out a video instructing people of the process it takes we see all these things on youtube we see them on on you know paid ads on on, on social media mm -hmm. what people can do the necessary steps they can do before they get to you okay. and then when they get to you you can restrict the way it, it does not matter if you know the ceo of exactly. of uh, innovate one that's correct you can't know the ceo of uh, white house no and still come to FBI building to say you want to do your passport and they will let you in. No, they won't. It is not possible. That's correct. So if you can respect them, you should be able to respect us. And the fact remains, you still, I, I, this is what observation tells us, right? That some of your team still allow people to cut corners, to just jump the queue and come to the front. Why don't we have that system where you have the tally number? You come in, you pull your tally number, and while you put your talent, you sit down and cross-check. There's a TV telling you, giving you um, the step-by-step, -step, uh, you know, I mean, ways of process that process. you need to right. undergo before mm -hmm. you even come before the window. That's right. So by the time you get to the window, you have everything readily available. It's a process. And if you're willing, whenever, when next you're bringing um, the service to Houston, if you let us know, we can come together and collaborate on this and we can have a better process. And because we don't want Afrocentric's name to be at stake, 
we would work with you on the process and to bring him because we want the best for our people. We want it costs so much to go to Atlanta. That's right. It costs so much to go to Washington DC. Exactly. And a whole lot to go to New York. New York yeah. You still have to be there for days, maybe two on the minimum, before you can and that's even if you get there and they don't tell you that there's no passport exactly. uh, mm -hmm. uh, passport booklet. Mm -hmm. uh, or uh, the, the embassy is closed because there's a holiday, holiday in Saturday. You know, on which we do not know about. These are the things you as a company need to inform people about. Okay, sir. Let me let me come in. Um, actually, the services we offer is a voluntary service. Um, in about 2012, uh, the former ambassador... A voluntary service, maybe that's where the problem also is again. Maybe that's why you weren't able to give people directive. Put a fee to it. Okay. You're saving them a ton of money anyway. Hotel fee, that's right. uh, feeding fee, mm -hmm. and travel cost. And even air, air, airplane tickets, you're saving them a whole lot of money. So if you say to you for your service, $50, $100, whatever it is you want to come to, that is not going to break the bank for these people, impose it on the price. That's it right. is what it is. If the embassy is going to be collecting $150, $200 to give you a passport, even after I travel to any of these three uh, states to get my passport done. And now you want to bring comfort to me biometrics everything yes. i can get mm -hmm. it done and you take it you take it upon yourself to take it to the uh consulate okay. and then they mail you your passport mm -hmm. that's comfort that's good you have to be able to pay for the comfort i don't care if you're coming as a family for individual one that we're going to be processing is 50 dollars or 100 dollars, and that is a fee charge to us it is a voluntary service to the consulate just that's what your company offers yes. however we are charging you for, for what this. for this mm. to mm. be done mm. and when people pay to get a service trust me thank you they they they, they actually <laughs> they, they do something good. you see thank you very much because we are in america which is a capitalist society mm -hmm. and nothing comes for free nothing and uh, I, I really appreciate that you articulated that people should know that when you put a value or a price on something you must get the value of, of what, what you're you paying for but the problem that we have that i've seen in the past eight years that we've been involved in this is that People don't want to put a price on it. They think everything should come just like that. But then I that reduces the number of people that you deal that, with. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you just that's, deal with the real people. When next they see your process go, within two weeks they get their passport. Trust me, the will, next they, one you will see. Come back. Yes. And well, I think it should be more than two, three times a year. It should be like every quarter, every two months or something. Right. No, normally, you see, the, the consulate is not meant to come out to the field. The reason why they come for interventions like this is because when we have a high number of people that have applied, that could not make the move to the consulate, then they will use us one as a humanitarian service to come and meet them at the site. And that should but be that quarterly. Is, still. And that is that, that, that should is, still be at least quarterly. Uh, that, and that, that is where the fee come up because for them to come, the government of Nigeria does not pay them to come. They come voluntarily and they have to pay their. But we make money for them anyway. I mean, people <laughs> well, get visa. Well, you can well, imagine if me, I want to do my passport, yeah. two hundred dollars mm -hmm. assumption. But for me to get a visa on my U.S. passport. It cost me about over three hundred dollars. That's right. So I'm saving more money anyway. Exactly. For a long time, U.S. visa is only a one-time use, or even if it's um, a multiple, multiple entry, uh -huh. entry, maybe two, three years there about. But yes. my passport still lasts me five years, five years and now exactly. they're making it ten years or so, That's right? right? Well, they, they started the ten years, but it has not come taking effect. Exactly. Let's just say it's at just least started. it's going to last it's me five be, years. Mm -hmm. So for the next five years, I'm getting more yes. for my money. Yes. So it's only someone that is very, very unreasonable. Mm -hmm. That will not take advantage of that. Yeah, I and I know a lot of people that are going to work because of their family. They can't mm -hmm. just up and leave. If you have if, if, three children, mm -hmm. four children, you want to fly everybody. It's the same rate That's for right. you to fly to by fly yourself. Exactly. And, you can, and mm -hmm. you still have to go there, book hotel for them, feed them, mm -hmm. and do all of those and things. And so, and, you have to, and you have to tell me that if mm -hmm. I'm paying mm -hmm. a convenient fee of $50 per head, mm -hmm. I'm not going to I'll take advantage That's of that. That's good. I wish everybody could have that kind of idea. No, but we need to put the now, word out there, though. You mentioned something about educating our people. This is what my organization have been doing to educate them why this is this why you have to pay this amount of money for cover booklet fee to cover administrative fee to cover transportation fee so when you go to there are a lot of people that are doing this agency job now collecting stuff and i want to but, talk about that uh, before, I, I, I want to talk about that i really really do want to talk about but, that. but let me address the please the, the consulate mm -hmm. one see the consulate has been very effective lately rather than where it was 10 years ago eight years ago because when people that are posted from Nigeria, the immigration officers, when mm -hmm. they come, they try to understudy what was there before, look at people like us to mm -hmm. find out how can we improve, which I've seen a lot of great improvement. But Nigerians have to understand that 
we should take the ability of saying, after all, it's Nigerian government out. We have to work in synergy. We have to help to make this thing happen. For example, you mentioned something. You when can't we, have a company here in organize, America and someone can just walk in and think it, it is your business. But, but, but you structure it. It, have, it like, does not matter. Create a straight line. Nobody <laughs> jumps the line. Take a tally number. Sit down. When it's your turn, we call that number. Ex if you do not respond exactly, the first two, three times, exactly. we we'll call on the next number. Exactly. And you skip your turn. And you don't you don't cut corners. You, you don't look easy. I mean, I know somebody know. Uh, we've done some successful one here that is very successful. I remember our 564. 500, 250. That's significant, significant in number. Enough. 500 people. That's true. That's true. Within that is three huge. Days. And you know, there was no. And that's the, another no thing. Within three days. So within that, three that's, days. that's, that's, you that's know. something. We yeah. should be able to extend it to like a week. No, the reason is that the a consulate officers are covered within the consulate. So whenever they come for that three days, that's why they come on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It was out of the office norm. If anything and then happened we should to them. do it. So, we should, we, that's why we need to protect them also. Exactly. But, we need to but, protect but this them. This is what we could have done that make it effective. I've suggested this to the consular general and the head of immigration, the immigration attaché, that if we want to do 100 people or 200 people in a weekend, like you said, the application must have been done three, four weeks before the time. The payment processing have been Everything. done. Everything. Then we allocate numbers per day. This number, 20 or 40, can come on first day, second day, third day. However much and we can accommodate, that, yeah. Then they're going to wait for the next round. Which is going to be in another and quarter. We need two, to, two, I think we need to so talk. Like After said, this show, we, we need to sit down mm -hmm. and talk. Because I would. I can pitch in on, on the way the process works, right? right? We have developed a strategy for different companies, even here in America, okay. to work. And the process flows. I have a business in Nigeria, in Chad, that mm -hmm. runs itself. I don't have to be there because exactly. I created the process, process yeah. right? And so why can't we do it for our home front? We can do it. So after the show, I think you and I need to sit down, sit down, talk about this, and see how we can together make this work, right? And also, I, I notice we don't have pap uh, booklets, booklet, mm. they call it. Okay. Let me address, address that. that challenge. I really <laughs> want to hear this. You know, every time they saw there's no booklet, it worries me too, because number one... So it is true there it, are no booklets? Well, sometimes there's no booklet because the printing companies... I don't know, the government of Nigeria outsourced the printing to some private companies. Now, the outsourcing... In Nigeria or Not outside? even in Nigeria. Malaysia. Outside, a country like Malaysia. Can you imagine? They're printing our own Nigerian passport in a country like okay. Ahad. I don't know how far it is true in Malaysia during the last administration. Don't we print this. our money in Nigeria? No, I just found out that even the central bank outsourced the printing of our money to another country. This was not like that before because you remember we have We don't Nigerian? print our own currency? No, we don't. You know, we have Nigerian security printing and missing. Okay, I, <laughs> you know, I need we, to come down. We have a Nigerian security printing and missing press in Nigeria before. That's what I was hoping. Those in are the people 70s, that should in be. The 80s. And it's very well secured. That's right. Very, but you know, some things have been diluted. And most of the things that we assess, we find out is corruption related because when you outsource something, you have to deal with it in foreign currency like mm -hmm. US dollars. Mm -hmm. But if it is within Nigeria, you have to look the <laughs> local And currency. then when they see the lumps are moving to your account, they exactly. already know they can trace it back know, to where. Well, so people use it to hide money overseas and they give their friends contracts so that they can make a, a certain number of dollars and when they go to another country i can go to another country and negotiate some prices and i tell them this is what the price is and nigerian government have to pay because i've negotiated with the country or whoever that is in charge so it's all about i mean taking something out of nigeria not giving something back to nigeria we'll, now for we'll, example we'll the, the passport is not a passport, is it just a booklet until when your information is printed on it? Yeah. I've challenged the government of Nigeria, why don't you print two million, three million, five million copies? The passport doesn't get expired until when they put information on top of it. So why don't you print so much for the number of, by statistics, we know how many people every year. Yeah, that's what data analytics uh, is there exactly. for. You know, we, we so, can so, hire so those data to analytics to work around how things, uh, um, uh, how things, uh, do, people that does business does intelligence. Business, exactly. You know, how things can work and how we can make things work. However, mm -hmm. one of these things that's, that's you know, I, I find it so disturbing is, the fact that you have a service yeah. and, and because you're registered with the consulate yes. to do this intervention thing with them, there are several others that does the same thing you mm -hmm. do. How so? Why? Because I know they only outsource the payment part and some to, other to, to innovate, to innovate mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Why can't we have such like that in different cities like that? And designated partner. Okay. This is what uh, Mr. Yobami does. Mm -hmm. And this is a service that we're using. It's going to be a, 
intervention mm -hmm. guy mm -hmm. for Houston. That's right. For Dallas, it could mm -hmm. be this, Somebody or maybe is. for a region, mm -hmm. Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, San and, and you, you, it's a hub. Mm -hmm. Even Louisiana, you can bring them out. It's easy to drive yes. four hours, six yes. hours. It is not go. just down to fly out there. Mm -hmm. So why are there so many? Hmm. You know, in a country like Nigeria, it's very complicated because we have different tribes, the Igbos, the Yoruba, <laughs> the Ahuzas, and everybody. Now, influence coming. People now use influence of, if I'm a Yoruba man and I have another Yoruba person trying to reach me, they want to go through me, the Igbo want to go, Ahuza want to go. But instead of us looking at ourselves as an entity, as a Nigerian. You know why United States mm. is flourishing? Yeah. Because it's called United, United. States. I mean, they, they Look say, at the name alone, that's United. That's they right. came together. Different that. states stand on its own. But then we have a country that binds them all together, that I, makes them a United States, sir, 50 of them. If I tell you what happened in the consulate because of all these tribal something, you'll be surprised that whoever that is the name of the affairs cater more to his people than other people. And I said it shouldn't be like that. We should cut across the board. Nigerians is Nigerians. Whether you are Yoruba, If they want to do that, they should just have like... You know, like they have passport offices in, in different states. Yes, exactly. Cater to your people in your own different states, which is fine with me because that is your state, which is should be your responsibility mm -hmm. anyway. But when you come to a place like United States, we have diverse ethnic things. Exactly. We have diverse mm -hmm. backgrounds. Mm -hmm. We want to come together. All we're looking for is, I am Nigerian, That's first it. of all. And I need to get my Nigerian passport. Something. And I know they're, they're coming up with a, uh, um, an ID card. ID card, uh -huh. national ID card. You see, what uh -huh. I expected Nigerian to do is that since the population census in the state of Texas and its environment has overnumbered any other part of the United States, a consulate should be here permanently. I that went to Nigeria. The, that is the so end yes, solution. Yeah. But for now, that we mm. do not have one. Hey, but this is another thing they can do. If we don't have a consulate, we can have what they call a mission post. A mission post is an administrative office where all those things we are talking about, passport, birth certificate, death certificate, visas. But we do have done. countries with honorary consulates. Oh, honorary consulates. We can have that. But, but I mean, we have, we, we are Nigerian, we are prominent, <laughs> we have a name. But this it, is Afrocentric. There problem. are some people mm. that are, that are, uh, that know a lot of people, that their integrity, their character, everything about them is at stake yeah. if they can take on that. Yes, we are one of those people. They can approach us. They can say, and we try to approach them too, and say, you know what, why don't you, why don't we break this for you? Why don't you walk through us? Let's coordinate our people. Yeah. When I say our people, I mean you're by Hausa Igbo, mm -hmm. whatever tribe you're from. Mm -hmm. We are Nigerians to start with. We, we are lost here in Texas, right. in, in Oklahoma, in Louisiana, yes. in neighboring states, neighboring states that mm -hmm. can still come back together mm -hmm. And we can do this intervention thing for you. And then everything we do, and you know, you're just like working as a distributor. You know, as a wholesaler, I don't have to, as a manufacturer, I don't have to deal with one million retailers. I can have distributors in different regions. And I will give them the price they need to, that they need to go with. That's right. And that's what they remit to me. They mm -hmm. sell to other wholesalers. Other mm -hmm. wholesalers sell to retailers. That's, that's right. why there's a chain. Right, and um, if we, if only we can do that, mm -hmm. we will, we will be able to make it through. With you, so, so, you see, the ball is in the court <sighs> of Nigeria. You know what we can do? In 2014, I went to Nigeria because of this. They told me it's only the Senate that can make a, a, a law to make that kind of thing happen. Then the same thing in 2016, the president so government. So it is the Senate. That the Senate, they are the one holding it. Up. Yeah, we will. Maybe you know, we need to come together as one and address need to do the Senate. The diaspora is like you said states of texas and it's above is to come together what they told me in 2014 is that we need hundred thousand signature of nigeria really? exactly so the ones we can only have it, we can send a petition to the senate as well as the presidency and demand if it is a mission post or honorary consulate like you mentioned that these people are so many here and they need the services of nigerian government that is here if they cannot move the consulate from atlanta or from another place because of reasons mm -hmm. because there that is a they reason understand why, now we will bring the have, money to them but exactly. just give there's us what we want consulate is in atlanta don't no, no worries <laughs> okay we don't need to go into <laughs> that right. details mm -hmm. right so now that we have that understanding i think after the show we, yes. we need to circle back together okay. and um, right. talk about this whole thing that, that's right, right. 
So I just want to thank you so much for taking your thank time you to much, even expose yourself because I know you said some things. <laughs> yeah, um, because, because it, 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 it has to be said. People need right. to understand the reality mm. of what they're dealing with mm. um, in order to get a, a Nigerian passport issued to them. You know, and we should address what is up before we finish. There are some Nigerians that we have identified that like to write petitions. For example, this show now, some people may look at it and they say, oh, they brought him over here. They wrote. We are wasting our time doing that because we should come as a united person in Nigeria. In, Amer in America, do you know the mayor of the city was elected with about 297,000 votes when we have 450,000 Nigerians resident here? That means if we can come together, we could have And we supported him, and that's why he always referenced to us exactly. whenever he's talking that talking Africans got him in office. That's all it. Right? So I just want to thank you, Mr. Abami, for much, or Pastor Ayobami, for yes. joining us yes, today, uh, for addressing this. Yes, we, we believe we will talk after the show yes. to make this come, you know, find a possible solution. Mm. We'll provide a solution. I would love to, to come to back to tell our people what are the stages and steps. We, and we, we, we need to do a video mm -hmm. to address exactly. all of these things. We could do that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And for our viewers, you heard it all. This is not something that is funny to me as you can tell it got heated up i i i mean i have never had to do this intervention thing but i've seen people do it a whole lot of times the experiences they have is i mean it is just it's, it's beyond the norm um however you know there's still a solution and that's what we're going to be talking about after the show well thank you for joining us please stay tuned as we continue with the show thank you